My name is Dave Morgan. I'm a professor of physics here at Eugene Line College at the New School uh, in Manhattan. And, um, and so I've been asked to talk about the relationship between fourth dimensional geometry and, uh, and Madeleine Langle's uh, Wrinkle in Time. Because most people's first encounter with the idea of, um, of four dimensions and this, this word tesseract. Was your mother able to explain a tesseract to you? Well, she never did, Meg said. And the word tesseract is really used to refer to sort of the four-dimensional version of a cube. Um, and when I teach relativity to my students and talk about the way in, in Einstein's theory of general relativity you kind of have to think in four dimensions, I really start with the, almost exactly the same example. Meg sighed. Just explain it to me. You start talking about dimensions in terms of taking a one-dimensional object and then building a two-dimensional and then building a three-dimensional. What's the first dimension? Well, a line. So a line is, is one dimensional. OK, and the second dimension? Well, you'd square the line. A flat square would be in the second dimension. If you move that line a length L into the second dimension, what you get is a square. So a square is two dimensional. And the third? And if you take that square and you move it into the third dimension, what you make is a cube. The square wouldn't be flat anymore. It would have a bottom and sides and a top. And the next step is to imagine that there is a fourth dimension. And this is the trick. Because we're three-dimensional creatures that live in a three-dimensional universe and have three-dimensional bodies and three-dimensional brains, we can't really think about the fourth dimension. And that object, I can't even make a model of it out of out of coffee stirrers like this because I would have to have some of the sticks pointing in the fourth dimension and I, I don't know how to point in the fourth dimension because I'm a, I'm a three-dimensional creature. So you really can't think in four dimensions, but it's really easy to do math in four dimensions. For example, if I ask, what's the size of this line in one dimension, you say, well, it's L, it has a length. Say, what's the size of the square in two dimensions? Well, size in two dimensions is something we call uh, area. And the size of a square is L squared. We say, what's the size of this cube in three dimensions? Three-dimensional size is something we call volume, and the volume of a cube is L cubed. And I've never had a student not know the answer to the next question, which is, what is the four-dimensional size of a hypercube or a tesseract? And the answer is, it's L to the fourth. When I draw a cube on the board, it's not really a cube. It's flat, but uh, it is the best two-dimensional representation we can make of a cube and in fact, if I look at a cube at just the right angle, it looks like that. What we do to a cube to make a tesseract, when we take the cube and we move it into the fourth dimension, the picture that's sometimes drawn is something that looks like this, where you have a cube inside of another cube with all of the vertices connected, something sort of like that. Just like this is the picture of the shadow that this cube would cast from a particular angle. It's basically a picture of what the shadow of a hypercube would look like in three dimensions from a particular angle. Now, if I change the angle of the cube, if I hold it like this, it looks like a square. If I hold it like that, it looks like kind of a hexagon. If I hold it in any different way, the shadow can change. So too, if I were to rotate this hypercube in three dimensions, this picture would morph and change in some sort of spectacular and ways that you can't really wrap your head around. And that's kind of the way it works when you think about this stuff. When you watch this thing move every for a second, you can kind of predict what's going to happen next. But it's still not the same as being able to construct the whole four-dimensional thing in your head. And so you can develop a feel for it, uh, but you can never really perceive its, uh, its real four-dimensional nature. And I don't think even someone like Einstein probably could. For a brief, illuminating second, Meg's face had the listening, probing expression that was so often seen on Charles. I see, she cried. I got it for just a moment. I got it. I can't possibly explain it now, but, but there for a second I saw it. 